Hi guys, welcome back to the desktop for another rules breakdown and this time I'm going to be doing Deadlands Hell on Earth, the Wasted West role playing game. So, I've got some dice, I've got a pack of cards for reasons which we'll see later. Let's get on with the rules. Skills in Deadlands are a relatively simple matter. If we flip onto one of the archetypes here, the Doomsayer will do us well. We can see they've got various traits here. So they've got deftness, nimbleness, strength, quickness, vigor, cognition, knowledge, mien, smarts, spirit. And underneath these, they've got various aptitudes. So underneath their nimbleness, they've got uh, climbing, fighting, brawling, and sneak. And these determine how many of the dice size above that we roll. So for their nimbleness at 1d6, if they're climbing, then they're rolling 1d6. So they get a 3, which is a low roll. For their fighting brawling, they're rolling 2d6. So a 3 and a 4. And dice are exploding. So if they rolled a 6, they would re-roll an add. And these are being rolled against a target number. If we go back a few pages. Um, I believe it's around about page 22. Yep. We have the target numbers here. So we have foolproof. So if it's almost impossible to fail, you've got a target number of three. A fair chance is a five, which is the standard uh, target number throughout the game. Onerous. So if it's quite difficult, a seven. If it's very hard, it's a nine. If it's incredible, an eleven. And basically that's how it works. You roll a number of dice based on the level of your aptitude and then of the type of dice based on your trait. Initiative is based on a dice roll and the cards. That's why we need those. And they're based on your quickness. So the Doomsayer here has a quickness of 3d8. So he's rolling 3d8. So we get a d8 and we get a 7. We get a 1 and we get a 6. So the highest success he got there is a 7. Now, in dice rolls in Deadlands, you get things called raises. So he's beta 5, so he has one success. So he gets one action plus one success. However, if he'd managed to roll a 10 or higher, that would have been a success plus a raise. So he'd have been rolling, uh, selecting three cards and so on and so forth. So if he'd managed to roll like a 20, He'd have been rolling a cess plus three raises, so he'd have been drawing five cards. And without magical help, five cards is the most you can draw for initiative. So, in this case, he's selected two, so we'll draw two cards. And we have a seven and a jack. So he is going, because you work down from the ace. So, aces go first, kings, queens, jacks. So the doomsayer starts to get going. Nine, eight, seven, and he gets his second action. However, certain things can take multiple actions to achieve. So if he's just shooting a gun or hitting somebody, that'll be one action. So he'll be able to do that twice. However, if he's rummaging his backpack for a stick of dynamite to throw at somebody, or he's reloading his gun, or he's drawing it, they will actually take more than one action. So he might start doing the action in the jack, but not complete it until he reaches the seven. And that's how initiative works. <laughs> Now for combat in Deadlands, it's very similar to the skill system. So we're looking here. Let's flick over to the Law Dog. And they have a deftness of 2d12 and a shooting pistol rifle of 3. So they're rolling 3d12 for their skill roll. So they're rolling it against a general target of 5. However, you apply penalties and uh, bonuses based on circumstances. If we flick over the blowing things all to hell section, we can find a brief summary of shooting. You can see the base target number to shoot something is, a f is fair, 5. It is modified by range and other circumstances. The range modifier is figured by counting the total range from the shooter to the target in yards, then dividing it by the range increment round down. Add this number to the base target number of fair. Add any bonuses or penalties to the t current target number. If the shooting roll exceeds equals or exceeds the modified target number, the shot hits, otherwise it misses. 
So the Lordog's rolling 3d12. Oops, that rolled for too far. We've got a 10, we've got a 4, and we've got a 7. So as long as his penalties weren't higher than 5, so we can see some of the penalties here. We go through them. If you're uh, called target, if you're trying to hit them in the heart, it will be a penalty of 10. If you're running, it's a penalty of 4, etc. But as long as his penalties weren't more than 5, he'd have succeeded in shooting. Now, damage in Deadlands is based on the type of weapon. So going back to our law dog for a moment. If we can find the section they are in. Shiny colour plates. The law dog's carrying a pistol of some kind. So going back to the equipment section, which is page 58 here, we can see pistols. They've got nine shots. They've got a range of 10, and they've done damage of 3d6. So their damage will be 3d6. If you manage to hit the target in the 10, in the head, so we go back to the uh, blowing things all to hell section, and we see hit locations. So we roll to see where they're going to be hit. And we roll to 17, so the upper guts. So, depending if you're hitting the gizzards or the noggin, if you're hitting the gizzards, you get a bonus one dice damage. So the pistol would actually be doing 46. If you'd hit in the head, you, or the noggin rather, you'd be getting a bonus 2d6. So it'd be 5d6 damage. Now, where you've hit, if you've not done a call shot, you can modify for each raise. So, if you manage to get a fantastic roll and get three or four raises on your attack, you'd have been able to alter that 17 up to a 20 and shoot the target in the head. Now, the location base uh, uh, decides what armor is taken into account as well. A 3d6 bullet that goes through something with an armor value of 1, for instance, is reduced to 3d4. A 3d6 bullet that hits something with an armor of 2 is reduced to 2d4. Because your dice size is reduced, so if your weapon's doing a d10 damage, and it goes through one armor, all the dice that you're rolling is reduced to d8s. But you're still rolling the same amount of dice. It's not until you reach d4 that you start deducting dice, until eventually you're not rolling any dice at all. So if you're rolling 3d8, and it goes through one, you're rolling 3d6 instead. If it's going through two, 3d4. If it's going through three, it's 2d4. And if it's going through four, you're rolling 1d4. An armor of five reduces it down to nothing. Now, as I said, the amount of dice is based. So if you hit in the head, you get an extra two dice. If you're hitting in the gizzards, you get an extra one dice. Now, we're rolling 3d6 damage, the base here. So we've shot the target in the upper body, rolling 3d6, a three, a six, which we roll an add. So a seven. Add, and for this we roll them together. So we've got 10 so far, another may reach 11. Now, size matters. Most humans have a size of 6, according to the rules here. And you divide the amount of damage by it. So 11 is only 1 6, so we've done 1 wound. Now, we can see wound severities based here. So we've hit them in the upper body, and we've done a light wound. However, they also get uh, damage to their wind. So we roll 1d6 for wind damage as well. So if we go back to one of the characters, we can see he's got 20 wind. He's been shot, he's lost two wind, and he's got a wound in his upper body. And that can be continued to bleed depending on the level of damage done, but he's received an upper body wound and he's lost two wind for that damage. <laughs> Now health is dealt with with healing, and we've got sore bones here. So sore bones can heal you up. They make a medicine surgery roll to heal one wound level. The time depends on the wound level, and maimed limbs cannot be healed by normal means. But they can still attempt to stop the bleeding. Natural healing occurs with target number, so you are making a vigor roll against difficulty listed on the healing table, adding plus two if you're under a doctor's care. So you're making your vigor roll, 
So go back to our character. He's got Vigor of 3d8. And he received a Light Wound. So he will heal that up in 10 minutes if he can make a 5. So he's rolling his 3d8. We've got 3. We've got an 8, which re-rolls to another 8, which re-rolls to a 7. So 23, which has some raises, so it would decrease the healing time. And his final roll is another extremely high roll. So, but the 23 was his highest roll, and he heals that up within 10 minutes, his light wound. Naturally. Advancements in Dendlands is using bounty chips. So if we flick on a few pages here, we can see bounty points on page 110. And spending bounties, you can spend them on raising aptitudes. New aptitude levels cost whatever the new level is. So if you want to... Your character's shooting to go from 3 to 4, it costs 4 bounty points. You can't skip a level and buy level 5 without first buying level 4. Um, raising coordination. Raising your hero's coordination is a trait and costs 2 times the new level. So to go from 4d6 strength to 5d6 would cost 10 points because it's 2 times 5, so the number of dice. As with aptitudes, you can't skip a level. You can raise traits, you can buy new concentrations, gain new aptitudes, and buy off hindrances, as well as many other things to do with the powers. Now that's a brief look over the rules of Deadlands Hell on Earth, and I imagine the rules are very similar for the original Deadlands game. If we look at one of the character sheets, we can see, because I had some problems initially, if we go to our friend, the Doomsayer, we can see, for example, he has knowledge of 4d10, an Academia Occult of 3. What I initially thought was he would therefore roll three sets of 4d10. So he'd be rolling 12d10 against the target number. And that did seem to be a little odd. But I went and looked it up and generally accepted is that he would be rolling 3d10. You're just taking the dice size from the trait and multiplying it by the aptitude. Because obviously, when you are just rolling an untrained skill, you're just rolling one of the dice size. Uh, with a penalty of four points for being untrained. Anyway, I hope I've got everything right. If I made any mistakes, please correct me in the comments because this was a little tough one, because I really couldn't find any samples of play particularly. Anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. But most of all, you look after yourselves, and I'll catch you later. Bye now.